Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about last night's NXT. But first, it's always fun to start <laughs> to start some healthy debate in the pro wrestling community. Larson, you stumbled upon an Austin Theory interview where he talks about the success, the current modern day success of WWE. And in this interview, he mentions the Attitude Era and how in his estimation, we'll get to the actual quote here in a second, he thinks that it is that that it's topped the Attitude Era. So we're gonna have that discussion today. Yeah. I just appreciate that. Even before we hit the live button, people in our chat already, oh my goodness. This guy, Bat Boy, says, not by a long shot. Time may have clouded your memory here. <laughs> oh, man. Demetrius says, hell no. Not even close. My good. There's some there's some uh, attitude era uh, fans here, Larson. Yes, there is. Uh, so let's talk about Austin Theory's uh, quote. So, of course, obviously now, WB ticket sales profits through the roof. That's hard data. You can't argue that. No, you can't. At the least, WB is entering a new boom period, the likes of which we haven't seen in a very long time. Yeah. But then, yes, you have to ask the question. Are they in a position now where they've already topped the success of the Attitude Era? Well, according to one half, the WB tag champs, Austin Theory answers yes. Nope. He was on the Battleground podcast and asked how things have changed now that Triple H is in charge. And this is what Theory answered. These transcripts come to you from WrestleZone. Quote, it's really cool, man. With Triple H in charge, it's been such an exciting time. It's really cool to be able to go to live events, and they're all sold out. Premium live events. We're not staying in the United States half the time. We do all these things, and all these shows are packed. And even when I'm doing, sorry, even when I'm doing meet and greets and things now in Australia, I did a meet and greet, and there was 300 people in the middle of a mall to see Austin Theory. WWE is just at an all-time high now. You can't deny it. I think we're well over the Attitude Era. I think we've topped that. I think this era has just solidified a new world of professional wrestling. What, a new world order of yes, professional brother. wrestling, yes. perhaps? Yes. <laughs> he talks some more about what it's like working with Triple H, but this is the, 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 the core of what he had to say about today's wrestling topping Attitude Era. So, let's get into it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Is there? Let me ask you this. So, let's, let's remove... Let's remove the the obvious, and that's business wise. Back in the Attitude Era, advertisers notoriously under uh, underpaid WWF for their advertising. Back then, wrestling was not really; it was only around the Attitude Era. They were like, "Oh my gosh, you know, we're you know, we we should probably be poning up a lot more money for this." Well, but that the, was that was a process. The stigma still attached to yeah. pro wrestling, yeah, you know, yeah, which absolutely largely isn't the case anymore. The money, even adjusted for inflation, uh, is wildly more now than it was then. So from a business perspective, it's not even close. Uh, WWF Attitude Era was small fry compared to the business of pro wrestling of WWE today. So that's let's just take that off the table. I think what people really want to discuss really is a more uh abstract concept i'm talking about kind of the zeitgeist cultural right? relevancy you know well here's the thing because i think in a lot of ways what austin theory is talking about is what we're talking about now is the business side of things oh my you god know, it's not about, even close it's not even close in that regard in terms of the cultural relevancy i mean Entertainment and how it's consumed today is so vastly different than it was 25, 26 years ago. The the, the entertainment market is so fragmented. And, and there's not very many things that get released out that capture the zeitgeist like they used to, where everybody's talking about it. It just doesn't happen very often because things are so fragmented. And so while... If your primary criteria is 
how culturally relevant is the WB product now versus the Attitude Era. The Attitude Era probably wins in that regard because it felt like there was a lot of more mainstream crossover in regards to professional wrestlers being involved in mainstream properties. And but and now WB feels like a very, very, very successful niche product. It is, which does would, have some measure of mainstream crossover. I mean, like talk about the the losing the stigma is you have ESPN covering pro wrestling. You have large mainstream media outlets covering pro wrestling on a regular basis. I think even USA Today for a while had a pro wrestling column. That wasn't happening during the Attitude Era. But in terms of the American population being aware of pro wrestling and what was happening, I think more people had an awareness of the world of pro wrestling probably in the late 90s, early 2000s they, than they do now. You have that anecdote about how you did the thing in, in your in your kid's class, and kids at least weren't terribly aware of pro wrestling, right? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I you know, that is, that is I mean, that's definitely a thing. I don't know, I don't know exactly what the, it, it could be that Attitude Era was the apex of that. It could be that the, the Hulk Hogan years were the apex of that one? It Entirely was because you know during the Attitude Era they were they were focusing on like sort of the college demo, not the family yeah. demo for sure. No. Um, so there's you know I, I you know less people I think know these. I think less people probably know these days who Roman Reigns is compared to how many people knew who Stone Cold Steve Austin was back then, which mm -hmm. also could be a function of what you're talking about in terms of how entertainment media was consumed back then. There was simply less uh, competition for the eyeballs back then. Um, that being said, you know, like an eyeball to eyeball uh, comparison, I don't even know how you would even begin to calculate that. If you look at TikTok, for example, and you look at mm -hmm. uh, WWE clips there, you look at WWE reactions there, people like literally just watching the product, you know, in clip form on TikTok gets millions mm -hmm. upon millions of views. If you look at YouTube highlights, millions upon millions of views. It's, uh, and you know, you can't, you, I don't know if you can even begin to quantify eyeballs to eyeballs now versus 1998, simply because of the immense number of distribution outlets there are for those eyeballs. I honestly, mm -hmm. I, I have no mm -hmm. idea if that's even possible. I'm sure if you got together, you know, some of the best minds of, you know, the statistics, demographics community, they could probably figure it out. Maybe there is a formula. It's not my job. Um, yeah. But, uh, but you know, so I, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, when you have something that's, you know, uh, a, a much smaller pond, and you're a, and you're you're a, a pretty decent sized fish, then yeah, it's going to seem kind of outsized compared to today when the pond, the entertainment pool is so much bigger. Everything has shifted uh, when it comes to uh, to entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, you you look at uh, some of it. I, I think is sort of just enthusiasm as well. I mean, I don't know what the what the total number of viewership was for 1995 WWE Raw. I'm sure yeah. we could probably look it up really quickly. I imagine it probably outpaces what WWE Raw does today. Could be, yeah. And that was like when it was dog shit. Yeah. You know, if you look at it in 1998, you just off pure enthusiasm, and uh, and and everybody bringing their signs and going crazy. Well, I just saw a show in France that was pretty damn crazy as well. There wasn't the number of signs, but also the takeaway signs these days. They do take away signs, yes. Um. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know how you quantify energy and enthusiasm, but like when people just say like Wayne Scoggins here says no, flat out no. What are you basing that off of? Yeah, exactly. It depends what what, your what, what are you basing that off of? If it's if it's strictly cultural relevant relevancy, then there is a conversation to be had there. If it's any sort of business metric, WWE is doing well far and beyond what they were doing back then. Yeah. Even adjusted for inflation, you can even make the case really easily that. The in-ring product is vastly superior than it was in the Attitude Era. That the consistency of storytelling is better now than it was during the Attitude Era. Does it have the highs necessarily the Attitude Era? Maybe not. Except for the Bloodline stuff. I think by and far, by, by and large, that is 
the standout from a storytelling perspective of this current era of WWE, and you could easily make the case it's the greatest pro wrestling story ever told, and it's ongoing. But if you, you know, a lot of people look back really fondly on the Attitude Era. There's a lot of dog shit, absolute dog shit stuff going on in the Attitude Era, and I just don't feel like the lows are nearly as low now as they ever were during the Attitude Era. What well, like well, I mean that's all subjective. Like the creative aspect of it, that's, that's oh, that's obviously, subjective. obviously, obviously. I mean, you can't put numbers behind it. But I'm just saying, dep- there's depending on the criteria you're using, is it from a creative standpoint, in ring standpoint, business standpoint, cultural relevancy, making the argument from one era to the other. That's all I'm trying to do. I am Zayas here. Says when I was a kid for the Attitude Era, and granted, we were, I, you know, I, I had a great time watching wrestling. Attitude Era. It's what got me into wrestling. I think mm-hmm. a, a lot of people are that way. So like. I've even got an it's I'm trying to be as objective as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I am Zayas says when I was a kid for the attitude era, WWE was everywhere from mad magazine, the muscle and fitness, Saturday night live music, radio, et cetera. I don't see that now. How many of those things are relevant now though? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like who gets on the cover of mad Mag? who even reads mad is magazine? Mad magazine still even the thing as a print publication. Is that a thing? I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. Like who's on the cover of muscle and fitness these days? Is it liver King? <laughs> <laughs> like Michael Chiklis from the Shield got on the cover of Muscle and Fitness oh, that's once. Interesting. Um, I think it was when he was promoting Fantastic Four, and I'm like, this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not exact, and they duded the shit out of that cover too. I remember seeing that and sending a picture to Jeff because we're both big Shield fans and yeah. cracking up because it's like he's like flexing like you know his arm, and it's supposed to be like I think they shaded in, they like generated like a a, a, a trap or, or a, a tricep, tricep rather. Yeah, it was pretty funny, <laughs> but um, it is. It, I mean, dude, look, I, I understand. I get it. Like, I know um, I, I back then the entertainment industry was so much different than it is now. And yeah, when the when the zeitgeist is sort of smaller and everybody knows what the number one song in the country is then it is that is a little bit on on the different side then that is kind of apples and oranges in terms of trying to figure out culture like what what really breaks through cultural yeah. in in yeah. terms of cultural relevancy these days um you know I, I i don't know that 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 is that is much more of an abstract thing yeah absolutely absolutely in terms of any concrete numbers that you can quantify I mean, it's not, it's not terribly close. Yeah. If we're talking dollars and cents, then, then you're, you're an idiot. If you think that it was, it was bigger back then. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's funny because like when you, when you look at it from a general, just sort of, you know, standing outward. Yeah. Creatively speaking there, there was, there was some dog shit back then. Some shit, obviously that wouldn't fly today. Um, but in terms of, you know, crowd reaction when people would, you know, when, when the top stars, the top 10 stars would show up. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. And it was, it was easier to get on the, it, there were, there were fewer entities back there to push people onto things like Saturday, Saturday night live, you know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, it is, it is a lot more difficult to, to, as forgotten media here points out to quantify cultural rel- relevancy yeah. just because of how, how much more of everything there is. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right. You want to talk NXT? Uh, yeah, sure. We're on the road to, uh, what is it? Battleground? No. Battleground's the next one. Yeah. The car's yeah, taking yeah, yeah. shape. At the, at the UFC Apex. Yeah. I'm not Which looking Which will hold either 100 or 1,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> one of the two. I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, um, they're pushing Gallus hard. <laughs> yeah, they are. Gallus are a big deal now. Um, I don't know what what was your takeaways last night. The I'll, I'll be honest. The part that entertained me the most was when uh, the D'Angelo family was talking shit about a kid. In axioms, they're all. Uh, it's a small thing. But it's 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 a funny little detail that they're making fun of A Kid. Well, A Kid's there. He's just under a mask now. 
Yeah, they they do that every once in a while, and it's and it's it is pretty damn funny. It's kind of sad state of affairs with NXT when that stands out, though. <laughs> I know. I mean, such you, a we, small joke. We have we have uh, more uh, uh, women could, uh, uh, qualifying for the ladder match, become the first North American women's champion at Battleground. You had a uh, Fallon Henley qualify, Jada Parker qualify. Um. You, you had Wesley and Joe Coffey do a double pin on Josh Poor Briggs. Josh Briggs, man. So Short they'll both the be there. challenging Obafemi at Battleground. Uh, Trix match hasn't been locked in for Battleground yet, I don't think. Although Joe Coffey comes out and it's like, yeah, I qualified for the, for the North American title match. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop there, essentially. So... Yeah, there was a lot of Gallus last night, which I'm a yeah. fan of. I just wish they'd bring back their own theme song. Um, but yeah, is is Joe Coffey going to do like two matches? That uh, is he going to? Is he also going to get a duty. world title match? Maybe. Wait, did they do the No I'm Dar match yet? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's no I'm wasn't even on this episode. When's Battleground? Uh, June 9th? 6th? 9th? Okay, so we got a couple weeks. I mean, they had the rest of metaphor there. Yeah, and then next week, uh, next week we're gonna find out who Roxanne's opponent is. Seems like the main roster competitor. Yeah, based on how, or competitors because Ava said Dick was on board, Adam's on board. Mm-hmm. So if it were a Raw or SmackDown superstar, you wouldn't need the go ahead from both GMs, would you? Both of them. So it's got to be two people unless it's somebody trained. unless it's somebody that that doesn't make any sense i was gonna say cross brand is there is there a free agent pool this year i'm sure people that were undrafted per chance if you're undrafted i guess it's possible here let me look on wikipedia because john hosey our three-time prediction champion says i think it's source. julia but julia has a fractured wrist right now yeah I think that was the original plan. I think the, she was, that, has another match scheduled against Ray in Japan still before the Marigold she, thing. Yeah, before she comes to the states. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of this is according to Wikipedia, so non-exclusive roster members, women's division: Alexa Bliss, Carmella, Charlotte, Nikki Cross, Raquel Rodriguez, Shotzi, Tamina, and Valhalla. Uh, Half those, of those names are not, only Nikki are not Cross available. and Tamina <laughs> are not currently inactive either due to maternity leave or injury. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of injuries right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know who it's gonna be. I mean, NXT's got a loaded, they've got a loaded roster, but yeah, the fact that she said Aldis and Pierce both cleared it, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they both have some sort be of because people. NXT and then, is uh, developmental, they both have some sort of I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then in the main event, we had uh, Lola Vice and Shayna Baszler taking on Karin Petrovich, Natalia. Uh, and after taking the L, Lola decides to kick Shayna in the head. Dance. And then Shayna chokes her out. We get a brawl to end the show. They're going to have an NXT Underground match at Battleground. That would be really good. That'd that should be, really be good. Yeah, that should be really good. Yeah. Shayna, do you think she was out of pocket saying, please don't dance? I mean, this has been a developing situation. I mean, any time that Lola's been dancing in the ring, if you look at Shayna, she's always rolling her eyes or shaking her head. Yeah, yeah, she's kind of done so with this it. Is, so this like, isn't anything new. I always yeah. like the storyline in wrestling when, like, you know, one of the characters doesn't like the other one dancing or having fun. <laughs> For some reason, that's always happening. There's always some sort of situation where somebody's like, hey, stop having fun in there. Right now, you know, Chad Gable, Otis, Maxine, the whole, you know, caterpillar worm situation. You know, if you get the job done and have fun doing it, why I don't see the issue. You know, uh, yeah, you know, if if it if if you're getting the job done, then yeah, I think you're right about that. You know, dance all you yeah. want in there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I sort of get that. Agreed. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Unless you otherwise, just don't. yeah, I don't know. It was it was a what? No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was saying otherwise, it was it was very Gallus heavy. We had Robert Stone come back. Um, apparently, uh, it looks like he might be Dante Chen's manager going forward. Yeah, that's cool. They've been trying to do stuff with Don- 
was that Dante Chen wasn't released? Guess not. I guess not, huh? Should have Boa. Boa was released. Boa was released. God, I, yeah, I know. I know. I knew that. But yeah. I thought. I thought Dante was as well. But that's cool. That's awesome. People seem to. I mean, the the, the crowd pop for him. So that's cool. I wonder if he's been wrestling on Level Up. Do we have to start watching Level Up? Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, his contract. Had so John expired? Chambers here just says contract expired. Whose contract expired? <laughs> Boas? Dante <laughs> Chen's? I think it was Dante Chen. Let's see here. Dante Chen. I'm just going to put in released. It pre-filled. Let's see here. Uh, mm, no, I, I don't. It doesn't look like it. Oh no, fifty. Uh, oh no, let's see here. Oh, Bear Winning says uh, Dante is the gatekeeper of Level Up. I don't know who this is, but somebody on Twitter said uh, there's this tweet that just says Thought Dante Chen got released. Glad he didn't. <laughs> so I, I'm not the only one apparently, and that was not my Twitter account, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah, Bear account, Winning Steve. says Dante's the gatekeeper of Level Up. Okay, cool. Right yeah. on. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Glad we got that cleared so up. People, Dante uh, was uh, not released <laughs> at the performance center. Who's, who's 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 behind Dante Chen getting a push? That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. That's good. Anyways, we yeah. can jump into it if you'd like. Sure, sure. All right. So we open up with a recap of all of last week's action from NXT, and then the opening bouts: Thea Hale versus Fallon Henley. You know, Fallon Henley. I don't know if you noticed this, Steve. She's a heel now. She's a bad guy now. Yeah, she's a heel. She's her. She's got a new attitude. Still can't stand when they say that. They don't really say it that much anymore, though. That was just they me. said it about who was it on Raw? Michael Cole said they've got a new attitude. Shoot, who? Ron Breaker? It? No. They still say it sometimes. Yeah, I'm not a fan. They still of that. say it sometimes. No, I'm not a fan either. Not a fan either. So uh, Fallon Henley gets the win here. So the finish saw uh, Fallon pull a chair off from under the ring. And uh, uh, Ridge takes the chair from her because all the chase used ringside. And so the rest talking to Thea while all that's happening. He turns around and sees Ridge holding that chair, thinking, oh, Ridge is about to hit Fallon Henley with it. And so he tosses all the chase used from ringside. Um, so... Uh, the uh, locks on a Kimura, and then Fallon tumbles out of the ring while Thea slides the Kimura on, and then drives her into the barricade to break it up. And there's this great shot of Thea where she's like just incensed. She's angry. She barks. She's super intense. She basically barks. She goes, yeah, ah! yeah, yeah. While Selen getting you know driven into the barricade, so they get back in the ring. Fallon's in first. So as Thea gets up from getting back of the ring, Fallon hits her with the Shining Wizard to get the win. And then afterwards, Jasmine Nix attacks Thea, hitting her with a Pele kick. So later on, we see Chase U, specifically the one dude there. Riley. Thank you. Uh, giving Ridge static about all this chair business. Where do you stand on this? Ridge, should he just stay uh, really far away from chairs, from ringside? I'm going to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of this Riley fella. <laughs> Neither am I. I can't stand this guy. What does he bring to the equation? He fucked up last week in their match. He did. And then he's like super judgmental because Ridge, when Ridge, Ridge was trying to do the right thing. Yeah, he was. But Ridge needs a little bit of self-awareness. He can't. He seems to can't get it. He can't get out of his own way. I don't disagree with that. But I feel like Ridge's attitude about things is much better, so long as Ridge does not have one of his blackouts, than, than Riley's, which is just being kind of a pill and being super confrontational about stuff. Yeah, but if not, you chill out and have actual conversation about things, they could work all this out. You know? Like, just chill, Ridge, Riley. Ridge, I think, needs to... Re yeah. Yeah, Ridge needs to replace Riley and chase you. You know, I think here's what they should do. They should hire the D'Angelo family to... Riley. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Expire his contract. His wow. life contract. My goodness. Yeah. Well, that's, what a great segue because next we get D'Angelo family. They're backstage. And this is the segment where they were making fun of Eight Kid's name because uh, Axiom and Frazier step up to him and Frazier's like, hey, congratulations winning that uh, Heritage Cup. Yeah, you might see my name on there. 
Um, and uh, Sax asks Axiom, have you won it? And Axiom says no. And so they start looking at the Heritage Cup and reading off the names. And of course, one of them's a kid. Well, the way when he said no as well, he was very hesitant to say no. Like, <laughs> it's like uh, no. Yeah, yeah. And so they start making fun of the name a kid. Who would use a kid as a name? Yeah. And, and Axiom standing there. Uh, mm. Then him and Nathan Frazier just do a big silly laugh. They do. They yeah. do. So anyways, uh, the family's asking why they're ducking challengers, and Frazier says, we're just not handing out tag shots to main roster talent. But anybody in NXT wants to win some match? Sure. So then is- a challenge issued. Challenge agreed upon. Later tonight, we get Stax and Luca taking on Axiom and Nathan Frazier for those tag titles. Why, are, do you think they're ever going to actually unmask uh, Axiom? Hey, kid's such a good-looking guy. I know. He's such yeah. a phenomenal wrestler, too. Gosh they darn it, he's so good. Dude, they are so much fun. Yeah, they are. They are so much fun as a team. I hate the entrance, but my God, they are so much fun as a team. They are. They are really fun as a team. Anyways, after that, we had a recap of Gallus. Hey, yeah, wow. Oh, I am. Yeah. Laying out, <laughs> laying out Ivar. And then we had a Gallus interview. Which is, makes me happy. Kelly says, you guys had a dramatic return last week. Joe says, I always seems the only way you've got get noticed by making a bad news. Didn't hear people talking about Tony D. No, I am there, Javon Evans. No, Gallus. And Wolfgang says, exactly as it should be. We took out three of NXT's best. Mark says, Ivar, enjoy your stay in the hospital, big man. And so Joe continues as West Briggs, a lot tougher we gave him good credit for. And then Wolfgang says, but they're not smarter. And Joe says, you know why is that? He's one fair. They're all in and out as you're talking. When I became number one contender tonight for the North American title over Femi, you're going to find out just how dangerous got us out. And he still got real comfortable with us being away. I sober. I couldn't. Wow. Wow. Did he, slip the, did he slip that in in the end there? I hope not. Oh my, you can't say that on USA Network. Oh. No. You can't say, can't say that. It's appropriate in the UK. You know, in Scotland, they can say, yeah, they but, can say oh, that. No, you can't be doing that. No. You're in America. You know, you, that there's a different context for, you know. Yeah, you can't be saying that. Can't be saying it. That's what I'm saying. You cannot say. C- but then. All right. But then over there, you can. Well. Like a lot. Yeah. No, I understand that. It's crazy. But anyways, let's move on. Stax and Luca the lawyer taking on Axiom and Nathan Frazier for those tag titles. Gosh darn it. Axiom and Nathan Frazier are so good together. Yeah, they team. just run circles around people. They're it's amazing. amazing. Fast, you know they're they're hyping up how fast Braun Breaker is, and he is in the ring. He runs the ropes really fast. Nathan Frazier, if if uh, Braun's running a four three eight forty, Frazier's got to be about a four three two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when he's sprinting, running those ropes, wow, fast. Yeah, yeah. So not surprising. Uh, Axiom and Nathan Frazier retain, but it's because no quarter catch crew. They come out, uh, they hop the barricade and attack Tony on the floor. And so that distracts Stax, allowing Frazier to roll him up and get the win, and then no quarter catch crew and the family brawl up the ramp. Axiom and Frazier celebrating in the ring of the Good Brothers. Uh, hit the ring, attack him, hit Frazier with the Magic Killer and hope those NXT tag titles. I'm guessing that's the match for Battleground for them tag titles. I really want Gallus to feud with the no quarter catch crew. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> no. You want to hear Joe Coffey say no quarter catch crew catch claws? <laughs> I want him to replace the catch with a different word. Mm. <laughs> I guess that's the theme of this episode, huh? <laughs> oh, after that, we have Robert Stone talking to Layla Diggs backstage. He says, I was so impressed with your combine performance. Soon everyone will know your name. And then this sack of shit Lexus King walks in and says, uh, but everybody's already saying the name Lexus King. My guy, look, you got it all wrong. You're trying to recruit the next big superstar. Uh, Chelsea Green wouldn't even reunite with me. You're stuck in a hole, man. The only way you're going to get out of it is to hitch your wagon to me. Stone says, yeah, that'll happen. Over my dead body. Lex says, dead body? Yeah, I know all about dead bodies because I've been walking over uh, uh, one. I've been walking over them week after week, winning. I'm virtually undefeated, Mr. Stone. Uh, so that's something you wouldn't know anything about. And then Stone's like, watch what you say. And Ava steps in and says, God, you're annoying. He says, uh, uh, you have a match tonight. You're going to find out who your opponent is in the ring. Stone says, he needs to get his ass handed him. 
and I'm going to be the one to do it. And Ava says, I'd love to, but mm -mm. remember last time you stepped in the ring? Didn't go very well. But that's okay, because you know what? I'll find the perfect opponent for Lexus tonight. Don't worry. And all the Lex offenders out there are very, very excited <laughs> about that, Larson. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we got a uh, Chase U arguing backstage. So Riley says to Ridge, "Hey, you're a liability." And Ridge steps in. Uh, uh, sorry, Ridge isn't there yet. Says Ridge is a liability. Uh, Ridge steps in, tells Riley, "Hey, back off." Yeah, you just can't. St he's, Ridge says, "I just couldn't stand there and see Thea get hit with that chair. I had to do something." And, and uh, Riley said, "You cost." Thea the match and Rich says Riley you cost us our match last week no hard feelings though and you're just being judgmental and Riley goes yep Ridge you don't belong here so Chase, mm. they start arguing Chase steps between them and says they want to settle it settle it in the ring and Riley says that sounds good to me and then Chase called his bookies and was like hey give me you know give me a uh, hundred thousand on Ridge Holland mm-hmm Anyways, after that, we had uh, Wesley versus Joe Briggs versus Joe Coffey. Yeah. Obafemi joined commentary, and they did this weird thing where Briggs got super buried. Instead of being yeah. stacked with another guy, instead, both guys pinned him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, so. Accidentally at that. Yeah. So, uh, Joe hit Briggs with a series of uppercuts, followed with a crossbody off the top. Wes breaks up that pin. Wes and Coffee trade some strikes. Lee takes out Coffee with a suicide dive. And then Wolfgang and Marek lay out Briggs ringside. And then Lee leaps off the top. Coffee hits him with a headbutt. And then they both just fall on Briggs and get the double pin. So it's like, uh oh, what's going to happen now with this Obafemi match? Uh, but before we find out, we had a Natalia and Carmen Petr Petrovic interview. They're asked how they're going to turn things around now against Shayna and Lola Vice. Carmen's like, I mean, Kelly, I'm a little nervous because it's my first main event, but I got the boat as my partner, Natalia. She has the most bitches in the history of the business. So if it wasn't for Shayna, Natty would have won her underground match. Me and uh, her are ready for tonight. And then Natalia says, Carmen doesn't give uh, herself enough credit. In the last few weeks, she's just impressed me so much. And we have bonded tonight. You're going to see this team be a well-oiled winning machine. Uh, then we get Brindley Reese. She's warming up in the locker room and a no fair blade there. And a no face says, honestly, bro, I think you're right. I'm cooked. I mean, the mirror, the black cat, the rabbit foot. And Blade says, listen, we need to remain positive like Brindley is saying. She's good for us in that way. The energy, the bonds, the good look. And Bradley goes, oh, really? Thanks. Does that mean you guys are going to come out with me tonight? And Blade says, honestly, no, this is not a good idea. Idris is bad luck and everything. And a no face says, stop saying that out loud. Brindley, you'll be fine. And Brindley tells him, look, guys, it's not about luck. It's about confidence. So whatever you guys choose to do, I'm all for it. So I'm a believer in the juice, but not necessarily so. luck. You know, I just feel yeah. like if you have a if, if some if some shit happens to you, puts you in a bad mental state, it's hard to get out of that mental state, especially if like other things compound that I'm a believer of juice, but not necessarily luck. I think what you're saying is you're a believer in momentum. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's momentum, yeah. not yeah. luck. I think there's some like, yeah. Yeah. But luck, I don't know. I haven't really experienced a whole lot of it. Like I'm I'm a pretty lucky guy in terms of like, you know, I got a great family, you know, some good things have come my way. But uh, you know, I don't I don't ascribe to like a black cat passes. I got a black I got a black cat here in the house. Yeah. yeah. Crosses my path all the time. You know, I'm not stumbling fumbling around. Yes. So then Obafemi walks into Ava's office, and uh, Oba says, uh, Ava, so what's your decision about this triple threat match? Who am I facing in the battleground? And Ava says, look, I've watched the tape many times. It's clear. Both Wes and Joe pinned Briggs. So battle for the ground, you're getting a triple threat match. Seemed and clear. Oba just walks away. <laughs> He's yeah. like, another triple threat match? I know, what another triple threat match. The Nor North American Championship is a triple threat championship. Apparently. Uh, and then we had Brinley Reese versus Jada Parker. Jada Parker gets the win here with that hip attack. It's pretty cool. I like uh, yeah. Jada Parker quite a bit. She's cool. Well, the, the kind of the story beat here is that Brindley was doing really well until Anofe and Blade came to ringside to watch the finish. And then once that mm -hmm. happened, yeah. then yeah. then uh, Tide completely turned. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever known anybody who's been like a bad luck charm. 
you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't think anybody... I mean, you might have Hilton, maybe. Well, there's a nemesis and there's a bad luck charm. Those are different okay. things. Yeah, right, right, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, after that, uh, we have Fallon Henley backstage. Jasmine Nix stops her. Says, hey, Fallon, I bet it fi- felt nice to finally get a win. And she's like, yeah, it did. And she said, Nick says, uh, now you get to go to Battleground. And she's like, yeah. All I got to do is climb that ladder, grab that title, and become the first North, the first women's North American champion. And then uh, Jasmine Nick says, and with this attitude, you definitely can. I knew you never needed any friends to be successful. Fallon's like, really? She's like, yeah, that's why I waited till after your match to get my pay back on Thea for breaking JC's nose. Uh, then we had a Roxanne Perez video you know, package. Hold what? on a second. I can yeah. kind of, I can really appreciate Shawn Michaels because like story beats are sort of like laid out. We don't have to do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to like, why did this person do this? Like, I appreciate it. Also like, like a little one minute segment here goes a long way towards building like, you know, character it and does. relationships. It really does. It really does. Uh, then we had a Roxanne Perez video package. Just talking about her being the prodigy. All she really cares about is the title. Yeah, it's kind of the gist of it. Then we have Ava on the phone. We mentioned this earlier. She says, uh, so I talked to Nick. I talked to Adam. Everyone's on board. Everyone is all signed, all good to go. So, yes, next week, Roxanne finds out who her next tile defense is against at Battleground. We'll see how this goes. And then we had Lexus King come to the ring to the delight of Lex offenders everywhere. He says, the king has been on a bit of a hot streak lately. I mean, who could argue with that? And we all know that whoever walks through that curtain tonight is going to join a long list of gentlemen who have fallen to the king. Let's face it, in 2024, I'm virtually undefeated. And then he's interrupted by Robert Stone's music. And then he's like, yeah, look at that over there. And then it's Dante Chen. His music hits. Crowd goes crazy for him. He comes out. And then uh, King, in the end, looks to get his finish in. And then Chen's able to reverse that into a roll-up to get the win. Uh, then we have Lola Vice and Shane in the locker room, and Shana says, you beat Natty in Underground, I beat Carmen 101, we should be pretty dominant out there tonight, and Lola says, yeah, together we're unstoppable, uh, Natty and Carmen only have one of three options, right? And Shana goes, well, listen, let's keep the dancing back here tonight, out there, we're cage fighters, it's all business, and Lola says, I'm all business when the bell rings, but I like to have fun, too. Yeah. Shana just looks at her dancing. Uh, after that, we had a Trick Willie promo. He said, let's get straight to business. Two weeks ago, Noam Dar calls me out here for a supernova session, dropped me from behind. I took that on the chin. Noam Dar comes out here, and, he get, and the last week, he gets he comes out here, he gets dropped backstage. Now, we all know uh, that uh, if anyone knows how that feels, Trick Williams knows how that feels, and I wouldn't wish that on anybody. So let me say this one time, make crystal clear so everybody understands what I'm trying to say. Noam Dar, I did not attack you. Does Trick Willie want to attack you? No, won't happen. If Trick Williams is going to attack you, Noam Dar, would have been, you would have been unconscious. If I wanted to attack you, you wouldn't have been holding your leg. You'd have had the size 15 Jordan logo tattooed right across the middle of your forehead. I don't attack from behind. That brings out metaphor without Noam Dar. Yeah. Chikara so, says, Trick, you need to stop playing. Yeah, I'll just take it. He says, you might have all these crusty, dusty, musties, Trick, but you're not tricking us because we know it was you. Might have been Javon, might have been the both of you that attacked Noam. And then Oro uh, follows his trick, cut it off. It wasn't Javon, it wasn't you. Or he says, it wasn't, if it wasn't Javon, it was you. You're probably still sore because my guy, no, I'm knocked the daylight out of you. He says, grow up, be a man, admit you're a low life, and you don't deserve to be NXT champion. And then Lash interjects. She says, wait a minute. She says, cut it out. Trick did not attack Noam. He didn't. So she's defending Trick Willie because they're secretly lovers. And then uh, Jakara's like, uh, what makes you think he didn't do it? And then uh, Oro says, come on, let's hear about it. And she's, look, I didn't even say it like that. Trick's actually been through this. And then Oro and Jakara uh, interrupt her. And Oro's like, whose side are you on? So uh, Trick's like, uh, uh, Oro, I suggest you shut your mouth. Gallus's music hits. Joe Coffey walks to the ramp. And he says, you're probably wondering why this guy just earned an opportunity for a shot in the North American title. Why am I talking to NXT chimp? Well, son, you're about to find out me. And then Mark and Wolfgang attack Trick from behind. Joe joins in. And then Javon Evans comes to the ring to make the save, but he's overwhelmed by Gallus. Coffee's hit him with an elevated German suplex. Gallus turns their attention towards Trick. And then Wolfgang and Mark hit him with their tag finisher. So, I don't know how this is all going to play out. I don't know either. Joe's going to be champ champ. 
Is that like no. a final, like the final boss is like, hey, these guys helped me prepare for my match. Hey, didn't he mention the final boss last night, Joe? Uh, yeah, he said something like... Uh, to he says, Marlin. I don't want to listen to what Ava has to say. I only listen to the final boss. Yeah, because, you know, they had the social... Yeah, you think they're... Yeah. Oh, working for the for, working for the Rock. You, you throw your ones line? up for throw your ones up for Gallus. Well, I mean, Till isn't fit, official. I don't know if I can do it. Dude, there's a whole picture on social media of them. He just said he only answers the final boss. What more do you need? I need them standing with the Rock, holding the ones up. Mm -hmm. That's what I need, Steve. Mm -hmm. Hold on so a second. Then, Sco wait, wait, I just want to clear something up here. What? Scooter, uh, somebody's asking what's up with the Twitch connection. Scooter says I think it has more to do with Steve's internet connection. No, it's not. Something to do with my, internet, do with my internet connection. <laughs> Something's going to clear my name here, people. Yes. When my internet connection goes down, I'll tell you my internet connection is going This down. seems to be an issue on my end. I'm yeah. Figure that out, too. So then we got uh, Robert Stone, Dante Chen backstage, and Stone says to Chen, Oh, you did great. You really deserve that win. And Ava steps in and says, Congratulations on the win. And Chen says, Thank you for the opportunity. And Ava says, Well, you know, I gave you the match, but Stone's the one that suggested you. And Stone tells him to enjoy the win, so Dante walks off. So Stone tells Ava, you're always looking for fresh town, aren't you? And Ava says, well, congratulations, you just made a new star. <clears throat> uh, and then we had Shayna Baszler and Lola Vice versus Natalia and Carmen Petrovic. Um, what was the finish on this one? Let's see here. There was a lot of miscommunications in this match between Shayna and Lola. Mm -hmm. And then uh, yeah. Nat Lola hits Natalia with a head kick. She's looking for a sharpshooter, but Natalia reverses that to a sharpshooter of her own. Shayna breaks that up. Um, Carmen looks for a crossbody off the top. Shayna catches that, looks for a clutch, but then Carmen flings her out of the ring. Uh, Natalia tags Carmen back in. They hit Lola with a heart attack to get the win. That's right. That's right. And then uh, after the match, Shayna helps up Lola, and then Lola kicks her in the head. Dances on the apron. Shayna gets to her feet, puts Lola in the clutch. Bunch of refs run out to break it up. Lola runs out of the ring. Shayna runs after her. They throw hands. Ava comes to the ramp. Says, if you're lo both looking for a fight, you can have your match at Battleground. And then Shayna snatches the mic and says, no, NXT Underground. And then she throws the mic down, charges Lola. And then they brawl. And that's your NXT review. What a breezy recap. What a breezy recap that was. You know, again... Probably, and I can put this on the thumbnail. I can sort of redo the thumbnail. Joe Coffey using the word on Seems American like terrible idea. television. Pretty spicy. That's the way but of putting it. Spicy. That's the way but of putting it. Spicy. That's the way of putting it. But he's definitely a way to put it. All right, you answer a few questions. Well, it's answer questions. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh wow! My spirit animals, the Dorito, wants to know if you were a transformer, what would you turn into? What a great question. So, you know, there's been obviously a plethora of cars and trucks. Mm -hmm. There was a gun. There was well, don't also forget the Beast Wars. Several there's dinosaurs, several jukeboxes. And animals. Construction animals equipment. And beast wars. Yeah, there's all sorts and of And then a bunch of animals. Um I feel like you should transform into Cody's bus. Oh wow, the nightmare bus. Yeah. Um, you know what I you know what I think it'd be cool to transform into? Hmm. Like an ice cream truck. Oh. Just saunter about town, you know, playing your little song. You can make some money on the side as well as being a transformer. Make some money on the side. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Make some kids happy with oh. the ice cream. What about a party bus? Oh, <gasps> Oh, like a stripper party bus type thing? Well, whatever party bus he wants. Bachelor parties and whatnot. That'd be cool. All yeah. sorts of stains on the inside of your... I, I don't think you thought this one through, man. No, I'll just think about it in terms of a money-making endeavor. Yeah, it's good for it's money. It's probably expensive to rent those party buses, you know? But then, like, it's you, so you're going to have all these, like, human bodily fluids in you. But I'm also a transformer. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as, a, as a robotic being... Human germs don't affect me. Yeah, but if it's still you, like, I don't know if you'd be able to. But I think, think if I'm aware that human germs aren't going to affect me. Your entire, that? wow, that'd be kind of a what revelation for you. Wouldn't you then be, be like number one advocate for, because uh, I know you've always been against transhumanism. 
uh, you know, putting your brain human into augmentations. Like yes. Yeah, like a robot body, like a Boston Dynamics thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Robotic augmentation's not my thing. No. Yeah, but I think you just made the case for it because you're a little bit of a germaphobe. Either make me all robot or all human. No in between. Well, you know, you just put your brain into a robot, so you are all robot except for your brain. No, I mean, you need to whatever consciousness is up here. You need to make into ones and zeros and put into a hard drive into a robot. Oh, okay, like a transfer, like a file transfer. Because then I think a RoboCop 2 where they have the robot with a human brain in it, and that was really freaky. How many gigs do you think you got up there, dude? Honestly, how long you think, <laughs> you think that file transfer, how long do you think that file transfer is going to have? 15 seconds. <laughs> you could do it over dial-up modem, too. <laughs> it won't take done. very long. Yeah, done. I'll be fair. There's not a lot, there's not a lot going on up here. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the Big Cringe says, seeing how King and Queen of the Ring are being run under Triple H, do you guys think that it should be a one-night event or the current format? I like the one-night event. It's gr- But if the idea is we're going to showcase the best wrestlers wrestling in great matches, you can't have a wh- one night where people are wrestling four 20-minute matches. It's too a, much. A two-night event. Yeah, make it two nights. Yeah, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday. Or do first round on Raw, second round, uh, the the Raw first round on the Raw before, the SmackDown first round on the Raw after, and so, uh, you know what, you have to wrestle two matches the night of the pay-per-view, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, yeah. Do like yeah, a hybrid cool. thing. Uh, John and Alistair voice, John, says, it's 2027, and the fate of the universe is in going in Raw's hands. Oh, wow. You must perform a top rope move to dethrone the extraterrestrial WWE tag champions. What maneuver do you perform? A top rope move? Yeah. And this is just me as I am, not Not, having been trained for years as a wrestler. Right, not Boston Dynamic Larson or Wrestler Larson. I mean, anything more than just your standard cross body or splash I think is well out of my depth, and I would probably hurt myself. I would go with a double axe handle off the top. But then you have to land on your feet, though, Steve. You oh, I'd blow okay out a knee that. or two. Yeah, I'll be you fine. break your leg. It's not that bad. What is it, like five feet? Yeah, probably. I do that in my backyard. The the from the second level to the first. All right. No, I don't. Bama does that. I don't do that shit. Yeah, you don't do that. I'll say you don't do that. Yeah, I'm terrified of that. Might no, that's a standard knee. crossbody. That's about the best I can hope for. Anything yeah, I don't know what Sid was thinking coming off that second rope on one leg. Wasn't he told to do the spot? He was He was told to, yeah. Should have yeah. said it doesn't work for me, the, for me brother. Uh, Mr. Sinister here asks, random thought I had, but what are the odds that Tomatonga winning against Orton due to bloodline shenanigans and then gives his spot to Solo so he can face Gunther in the finals? Uh, basically nothing. Yeah, I would say... if that happens. I, I would say... That would be really wonky. That doesn't yeah. seem like Paul Levesque would do that. And that's not something Solo's been pushing either. And now for the situation where, because if Solo really won, why didn't he just have Heyman go and politic to get Solo in? Yeah, right. Yeah. If know, there was a title yeah. shot on the line because of it or something like that, it makes sense. But otherwise. Uh, go ahead. You haven't written it yet. Uh, Thanasis Valkyria says, Hey, friendos, what do you think the chances are that we get a tribal chief swerve and Jacob Fatu is revealed to be the person Solo has been talking to? <laughs> like what if, Jacob like they... Fatu has been impersonating Roman? <laughs> what if they... He tries to gaslight uh, Paul and he's like, yeah, this is Roman. And it's like clearly just Jacob Fatu. Man, I saw, I think it was a WrestleMania yeah. on their thumbnail. Uh, for like, uh, you know, latest rumors that, you know, shit that's going to happen at at King Queen of the Ring. It's like a bald Roman Reigns in the ring. (laughs) Staring off with like Solo or something. That's funny. (laughs) I'm like, damn it. We need to be more clever. (laughs) We need to juice up our stuff like that, dude. He'll have a reveal like Undertaker did at what end of an era when he had the walk. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Here's a Star Trek question. White Brownie says, if Star Trek were to have a fatal four-way ladder match for ownership of the Enterprise, who would win between these four guys? Kirk, Spock, Montgomery, or McCoy? Well, it's Kirk. 
I think it's I mean, Spock. Not Spock. Spock, yeah. Spock is stronger than your average human, right? I think Vulcans have super strength. Then, and yeah, they've Spock, got the sorry. pinch. Yeah, Spock, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Spock would win. Spock would win. Luis here says, in the Bloodline Civil War, who gets the ones? And what does the other faction do? L. The other faction gets the L. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So the bad Bloodline will get the L. They get the L. And good Bloodline, put them up, gets the one. They get this. Good bloodlines is. Bad bloodlines is. But then I got to make a choice. Which do I stand with? Do you acknowledge your tribal chief or you acknowledge the final boss, Steve? That's I think it's who's got like custom attire. Because like you, you, early in the pre-show you mentioned, yeah, the Roman Reigns bloodline shoes are not yeah. actually bloodline shoes. You know, it's not an official. Once to, if WWE and, and Jordan, if Jordan lowered itself to collaborate with WWE. <laughs> That's really the thing. <laughs> then I'd be all about it. But like. At least The Rock has his own, like, was it an Under Armour or something like that? Yeah, he has his own line of Under Armour yeah. gear, of training gear, yeah. Probably probably be throwing up that L there. Yeah. Uh, Dave Matuszek, with TNT presumably losing the NBA rights this week, do you think AEW could benefit from WBD's checkbook? What checkbook? All signs indicate that their checkbook doesn't the exist. Checks. Or danger of bouncing. I don't know if 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 T or T and T loses the NBA, then then suddenly they're going to overpay for AEW. I don't think that's the case. I think they're going to pay. They're going to make the same offer to AEW regardless if they kept the NBA or not. The one thing that could change is they can maybe put some little more oomph in the marketing department behind AEW, since at that point they will more or less be flagship programming for TBS and TNT. Yeah, I think uh, I'll put it this way. I think WBD at this point would definitely be more apt to outbid somebody else. I think they would do that. I don't know how many other suitors really are going to put up a fight for AEW, though. So I feel like they're just going to pay what they probably were going to pay in the first place. Um so yeah, I Zaslov seems like he's just interested in cutting costs like as much as possible though. So. Yeah, a thousand percent. Godzilla says, Steve, why do you not like my Mavs? Something, something about Luca just bothers the shit out of me. I don't know what it is. I'll be honest, I don't know. Is it Part of it is he wears lot? like he wears like a t-shirt underneath his attire, except one doesn't have a sleeve on it. That bothers me. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why. He's just, I don't know. I don't like the Mavs. All right. And on top of that, going they're going up against the Wolves. Get out of here with that. Love the Wolves. Yeah, love the Wolves. Love the Wolves. Um, Alex Foster here says, besides the Nofe and Blade story, what other current stories in wrestling have arguably gone on too long? Anything Chris Jericho's doing? Um... I'll be honest with you, like dissension in the bloodline. I'm sorry, not bloodline. Judgment Day. Yeah. Can we just can we just get on with whatever this is? Yeah. <laughs> can we just can we just put up or shut up? Can we just do this, please? Yeah. Uh, Fazzy says, has NXT's women's division become the best in pro wrestling? So I haven't really watched TNA since they fired Scott Demore. So I don't know if the booking in their women's division has been as consistent as it historically has been. Well, of we the saw brands, clips from that Jordan Grace. Wasn't it like the Jordan Grace, like the women's championship match at that last pay-per-view? It was just like, or whatever oh, yeah, the big, yeah, yeah. all the returns happened. And it was Steph like, Delander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Steph Delander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of the promotions I watch, NXT probably has the most consistently booked women's division on cable television. Yeah, I'd say between WWE in AEW. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Kelmiko here says, heard a, a rumor officials would like Tegan Knox to have an NXT run again. What are some others you think right now who could benefit from another NXT run? Mm. It's hard for it not to feel like a, a demotion, so. I know, I know. Yeah, I don't. It's I'm not tough. a huge fan of that. Like, I see the Good Brothers in NXT. I'm like, I don't, I don't need to be there. It's just like they they got nothing for them on main, so they send NXT. That's and that's like. kind of their story too. They're like, yeah. oh, you know, all these you know main roster people coming down to NXT. They sort of acknowledge it, you know. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Undertaker. Undertaker comes back, goes to NXT. There you go. Uh, Joe the Me Maker. If Logan Paul decides to go to NXT, who would you like to see him feud? He says a tag team with Lexus King would be amazing. Who, Logan Paul? Yeah. Oh, don't put him with Lexus King. No, yeah, wouldn't terrible idea. That. Logan Paul, not a Lex offender. Put Logan Paul in Gallus. And he's like, do I get to say better than putting him with with Lexus King? (laughs) They're like, no, you're not allowed to say the word. He's like, but I want to say, "Mm," you know, Mm. you can't say it. You can't say it. Oh, my God. He's like, wait, what? Why did you say I can't? You can't say it. No, that's you're saying can't. You're saying can't. Right. Oh, sure. Wow. Anyway. Wow. Indeed. It's all the questions I have here. You have more questions? Uh, uh, Bohemian Baron says the vignettes are cool, but where does this Wyatt Six Howdy faction even fit on the card? I mean, on SmackDown, I guess if they want to eventually elevate that group to maybe a program with Cody, because Cody needs some interesting stories until Rock and Roman come back. So, mm-hmm, yeah, why not there? Yeah, there you go. That's good. That works. That works. Anyways, is that all you got? That's all I got. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll see you around. Goodbye.